It should come as no surprise that one of the things I enjoy most in making this series is educating myself on as wide a variety of gaming's past as I can. So, diving into the libraries of machines I own and collect for to find some games to check out is always going to take precedence over reliving nostalgia for what came before in my own gaming journey. Especially when it's on a machine I've not fired up in quite some time. Which brings us to Elven Software's Bolo, published by Synergistic Software, with its manual recreated in this lovely book, Synergistic Software, The Early Years, which came out a few years back. It's worth noting that this particular Bolo is not related to the one which appeared on other machines a few years later. Though both do share the same inspiration, a series of science fiction novels involving autonomous tanks set in the far future, that's really about all they share. So back to this Bolo. Your objective is to explore the map and wipe out the six enemy bases in each level. On starting a new game, you're first prompted for two options. The first, most important, is obviously the difficulty level. Increasing this not only results in tougher enemies, but it also introduces more of them into the mix. It should be no surprise that those introduced on the higher difficulty levels are of course more challenging to outwit than those introduced on the earlier ones. The second sets the density of the map. This might sound odd, but the map in Bolo is a maze, and this controls the generation of walls within it. It might be an option that's a little over the top, but I feel it's a great way to add a little spice to the game if you're not quite ready to bump up the game's difficulty. With the first level generated, you're now in place, and it's where it all begins. You might not feel it at first, as you don't encounter enemies until you're closing in on one of those bases. The question I'm sure you're asking is, how do you locate those bases? They don't appear on your map, so is it a case of searching for a proverbial needle in a haystack? The answer is thankfully not. On your instrumentation panel, there's a 2x2 two two cluster of lights which indicate any directions a base is situated in. Just pick one of those lights and follow it until you come to one. It is a little awkward, but once you get your head around it, I do find it actually works and it won't be long until you're zipping about with ease. Personally, I'd have preferred the map to have shown something instead, but this leads you into Bolo's big selling point. The giant maps. It's the first thing that was cited in its adverts, being there 132 times the size of the Apple II screen. And honestly, that's probably a little too much for a game in this era. In most of my time playing Bolo, I found myself just wandering about with nothing happening around you, scouring the void to find those Spartan signs of life. In the form of an enemy stronghold, of course. Though funnily enough, on the flip side, this offers plenty of opportunity to get used to the control scheme, as Bolo offers options for both keyboard and joystick control. The difference is that unlike other games on the Apple II, both of these options play quite differently from each other. For keyboard players, you've got controls to accelerate or slow down, plus turn the Bolo and come to a complete stop. You can also rotate your turret, which compensates for your slow turning rate. It's very much a press a key to time to do something control scheme, which honestly fits in with how the Apple II's keyboard hardware is accessed and read. It's functional, though I did find myself getting a little key tied on more than one occasion, resulting in me becoming one with the wall in an unplanned scenario more frequently than perhaps I'd have liked. For joystick players though, it's less trundling about the map and more zipping about. Pushing the stick in a given direction makes your bolo turn and move in that direction. And the further you push the stick, the faster it goes. The joys of gaming with analog joysticks. 
as you can change directions so quickly. There's no need for turret controls here, though you can of course toggle between moving forwards and in reverse by tapping the secondary fire button. There's something for the dichotomy of input methods here, as I found switching between them really changed up the feel of the game, and honestly I can't think of many from this era which had this aspect to them. Once you do close in on a base, you can see where the true challenge of Bolo really lies. These bases do that thing Gauntlet would later popularise, serving as generators for enemy hazards. Unlike Gauntlet though, they could spawn any of the enemies in play, and if you're not careful, you can get overwhelmed quite quickly, especially when you're playing on the higher difficulties. So you're going to need to dodge and avoid them whilst you chip away at the outer walls. Though, if you're not careful, those walls do rebuild themselves, requiring you to do it all over again. Though, when you have cleared a hole in the wall, taking out the base itself requires you to do nothing else but shoot the core. Once that's done, the base goes up and you're free to scout out the next. When you've wiped out that final one, it's time to do it all over again as the game will generate a new maze for you. Sadly, achieving this doesn't increase the density or difficulty level, which is something I'd have loved to have seen, especially because it's an arcade style game and it just feels rather apt. Though I guess things are enough of a challenge as they are after all, so perhaps it's no big drama. In the long run, Bolo is very much a score chasing experience, though it's one which only tracks a single high score. Though perhaps it's not something which was important for long term players, I do wish it had a full high score table or at least kept track of the best score earned on a given difficulty level. Though I guess back in 1982, the dedicated players out there would probably have kept a high score notebook of their own with all the high scores they'd made as they'd played it over their time with it. It shouldn't really be a surprise to me to say that I am really a bit of a sucker for these types of action games. Ones where you're not restricted to scrolling about in a single direction, but free to explore a larger map in order to find and destroy your objectives. So for the most part, Bolo really manages to be a challenging game which provides plenty of action, but more importantly, handles well, regardless of if you're playing with keys or with a joystick. I'll admit, I do wish the maps were smaller, the hype of the maps being 132 times the size of the Apple II screen does make it a little underwhelming when most of that means you're spending your time running about getting from place to place with nothing around you. But again, I don't think it's something in the long run which is really going to harm your time with it. Perhaps if enemies ventured farther away from their bases, this might have been less of an issue as at least that way, there's less chance of you zoning out without a good reason. I certainly had a few too many times when I was on autopilot because of all the empty space and crashed into a wall for no good reason. The thing is though, I really quite dig Bolo. Sure, it's not highly innovative, but it is technically accomplished with its smooth scrolling and great controls. I don't think it's one which could stand amongst the Hall of Fame for the top games on the Apple II platform, but I certainly believe it's one that I had a load of time playing, and I do feel you should take the time to check it out. Particularly as you don't need to scour the secondary markets for it. Just visit the page for the synergistic software, the early games book, and grab the disc images. Though having the book is nice for having the manual, and also as a way to inspire you to maybe check out some of the other early games synergistic published. For me though, it's part of the joy of experiencing the lesser talked libraries about these home computers like the Apple II and amongst the other 8-bits. Though it is a bit of a shame Bolo didn't do well enough to have received ports to other home computers, I guess it's one of those games where I feel the controls wouldn't work as well on them, as the analog joystick support is a distinctly Apple II thing and really just can't be replicated elsewhere. As for this, well, it's time for me to bring this one to a close. As always, if you enjoyed it, do hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and maybe tell your friends.
But with that, that's all from me on this one. So thank you all very much for watching.